Hey everyone, welcome to Holistic Lifestyle Tips, Getting Real About the Woo Woo. I'm Becky Russell and I own a wellness company called Hope Essential. And I am a holistic lifestyle educator. And that involves uh, sharing what I know about holistic living, which I've done over 25 years. And also educating about essential oils, which are a great fit for that kind of lifestyle because it's very proactive about wellness. And as we discussed uh, in the previous weeks, holistic means treating the entire body, mind, body, and soul. And we've focused uh, quite a bit on the physical wellness in the past few weeks, uh, just because we're sort of tracking my journey into the holistic world. And tonight I want to focus a little bit more on spiritual wellness. And honestly, if you are not healthy spiritually, your physical and emotional health will suffer as well. And the first time I really understood that I was in trouble spiritually was when my kids were teenagers. And that can be a stressful time. And although my husband and I were always together uh, on any kind of discipline or, you know, discussion with the kids, so I know how blessed I was that, that we were always on the same page. And, uh, but I was the one at home during the day and dealing with it the most. And sometimes it got very challenging and I felt sort of alone because not every friend of mine was dealing with similar situations. Either their kids uh, had different personalities or different ages or, you know, lived in different areas. So it just was a whole, I didn't really feel like anyone understood what I was going through. But I also knew it wasn't that awful, but I was a worrier. And the more I worried, the more I tried to control. Is there anyone here that can relate to that? And of course, with teenagers, there's very little. It, it's an illusion of control, right? And I would get to the point where I would be so consumed with worry that I would hyperventilate as I'm driving a, the car. And I was trying to do all the right things to health wise. Um, but the worry affected my sleep so much that I ended up, I tried everything over the counter, but I could not turn the worry off to be able to sleep. And I was on a, a prescription for sleep and it did its job. But now that I know what I know, uh, it was probably not, the best thing for my body, but at that time, it was what I had to do. And so I was getting sleep, but, um, and I had the support of my husband, but it was very, it was a very stressful time. And I was at the grocery store picking up my prescription for sleep, and I just happened to uh, see a, one of those spinning racks with the little, planners and little books and calendars and I was just searching through and a lot of it was on meditation but that just didn't appeal to me and I came across a book that really stood out to me and it's called You're Late Again Lord and the subtitle is The Impatient Woman's Guide to God's Timing and it's by Karen Phillips Goodman and it's a funny looking sort of comical cover that caught my eye. The title caught my eye. And when I thumbed through it, I saw that there was humor inside the book as well. And along with scripture and some very, you know, personal stories from her. And I really resonated with the, with that mix of things. And so you can tell I have, uh, sticky notes from the many times I read, have read through it. I typically do not read a book more than once because I retain pretty well. But 
uh, sometimes we have different worries at different times. And I do uh, reread this book quite a bit. And I'm happy to say I have come a long, long way in controlling my worry. And I also am off the sleep medication, and that'll be another segment. But um, this book was the first one that was super instrumental in me understanding how, uh, how unnecessary and harmful worry is. And I didn't even realize, I mean, aside from the hyperventilating, I thought I had things under control. And I kept, you know, did what I did during the day. I would write and then I'd go to the gym and, you know, get the stress out, I thought, with the racquetball or, or lifting weights, whatever. But when I would go meet a friend for coffee, they would ask me if I was okay. And I'd be like, well, yeah. And they said, well, you look really stressed. And I had no clue. I thought I had it covered. And enough comments and enough hyperventilating attacks and so forth. And I realized I, I needed to get a handle on this. And I got the worry, honestly enough. My mom was the master worrier. And so that I probably saw that, modeled that just from seeing her, even though I didn't like what that created, um, it just it just happened. And so when I started reading this book, what I really appreciated about the message is we don't have to patiently wait. We are to wait with purpose. And I love the word purpose. And I love the you know, being able to act. I, I'm not a patient. I'm patient, but um, when you feel that your prayers aren't being answered because it's taking too long, uh, what she explained in here is that that notion is saying that you really think that you should be in control of your life, that you can manage it better than God. Now, God can be anything for you, whatever that is to higher being, whatever that is to you. Um, but when you put it that way, like, who do I really want to be in charge? Do I really think I know more and have the, the big picture view? Um, you know, why would I think that I should just tell God, oh, step aside, I've got this, uh, or critique his timing or his plan. Um, that's very, um, that's quite an ego. And so she just, with her humor, with her scripture, and then what I also like um, that makes this a little different too, is she actually gives you homework assignments. So it really pushes all my buttons on relativity. So she has little things at the end of each little chapter called while you wait, meaning she has this, this little um, oh, idea that you're, God put you in a waiting room when you don't understand the lesson he's trying to teach you. And so when you're in that waiting room, you're not sitting there passively and with a negative mindset or anything. You are to be purposeful in that wait to try and figure out what lesson you're supposed to learn. So in the chapter that's called, um, let's see here, God is in control at the end of it. And they're short chapters. So that's nice too. Um, she has, what will you do to wait purposefully today? And how will you work to know God through your wait? And so they're, it's just really making you just dig a little deeper. And so once I could get my worry under control and then also realize that control is an illusion anyway, uh, it, it just brought some peace into my life. And it also made me understand that part of why 
my mother and I were not close is that worry, that obsessive worry and that need to try to control everything around her was what kept us apart and built a wall between us. And I didn't want that with my friends or family or kids or I just, I didn't want to live that way. So I had to figure out something different. And once I gave up that illusion of control, once I really dug a little deeper and followed some of the exercises here and then continued with my, you know, development with spiritually, um, I felt more at peace. And my wish for you is that you don't settle for um, just being, just existing. That you don't settle for um, just being impatient your whole life. And that you understand that um, you, when you are waiting for what you're, you're praying for, that it does not have to be boring. It does not have to be um, a lesson in patience. It's actually a time of purpose. And maybe if you think of it that way, it, it can help a little bit. But I really encourage everyone, I buy these copies off Amazon um, used books. I don't buy them new, they're too expensive. And I, I usually have a couple on hand because I've given them out so much. And um, it's not the entire answer to worry or to control issues, but it's a start. And so I would love to hear from you what you do to stay spiritually well. And if you uh, need some other ways to stay spiritually healthy, um, be sure and go to hopeessential.com under the tab spiritual wellness. And there's a lot, there's this link for this book there. And then there are also other blogs that talk about spiritual wellness. I hope you uh, were able to learn something from this little segment. And please share in the comment below what that aha moment was, if you had one. And uh, again, share how you stay spiritually healthy. So till next time, choose you, choose natural, choose now.